among all the astonishing documents accidentally or fatefully unearthed in 1945 near the desert village of Nagamati in Upper Egypt, the Gospel of Thomas has made the greatest impact on our understanding of Christianity. The first English rendering of this text was published in 1959 and was greeted with intense interest by scholars and theologians alike. But the impact of this document was soon felt far beyond the circles of specialists, almost as though an audible recording of the voice of Jesus had been discovered. Even across the reaches of millennial time, and even through the veil of translation from languages known to but a few, for many of us the words in this text have the power to touch an unknown part of ourselves that brings with it an undeniable recognition of truth and hope. The Gospel of Thomas was missing for almost two millennia until three copies of it were almost miraculously discovered several decades ago. Two sections of it written in Greek found in Egypt and a more complete edition in the Coptic language found near Nag Hammadi buried under the sands of time in a clay storage jar. Practically predicting its own rediscovery, the book of Thomas says, Know what is before your face, and what is hidden from you will be revealed to you, for there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor anything buried which will not be raised, saying five. This is a contemplative wisdom gospel with its format of proverbs and parables. It contains absolutely no narrative whatsoever. It is comprised solely of 114 unvarnished sayings of Jesus, one after the other, and that's it. There is no commentary and no story. No more Roman centurions, scribes, Pharisees, and locusts to block our view. Rather than being presented through the lens of others, the reader encounters a more direct, unfiltered, historic Jesus. The intention by those who compiled and circulated this collection is to encourage readers to deeply ponder each and every saying for themselves, leading them to their own personal insights and revelations, to internalize the words and be transformed by them. Though nowadays associated with Egypt, these surviving pages are copies of an even earlier Greek manuscript, most likely originating from Syria, which was and remains home base of the St. Thomas branch of Christianity, the Syriac Aramaic Church of the East. It is said that St. Thomas during the first century AD headed east, eventually ending up in India, where he spent the rest of his life. The living master said to his initiates, What your own eyes cannot see, your human ears do not hear, your physical hands cannot touch, and what is inconceivable to the human mind, that I will give to you. Saying 17. The master taught his disciples that in order to see the spiritual realm, they must fast from the world and enter into heavenly repose, Sabbath rest. Rise above mental impressions, memories, worries, and agitations. They must set aside some time to rest spiritually, to temporarily close their physical eyes and ears to the outside world in order to see the Father, the Supreme Being, with the eye of the soul. Saying 27. The Egyptian mystic Evagrius wrote, the offspring of pure prayer is swallowed up by the Spirit. From this point on, the mind is beyond prayer, and prayer has ceased from it now that it has found something even more excellent. No longer does the mind actually pray, but there is a gaze of wonder at the inaccessible things which do not belong to the world of mortal beings. We have come from the light, is the Gospel of Thomas saying 51 for you have come from it and you will return there again 
So a living teacher by the name of Yeshua once taught his living students that they would be able to experience entering the kingdom, the other dimensions of inner space at the heart of the present by seeing divine light. If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light, a saying preserved in Matthew 6.22. For this reason I say, if one is whole, one will be filled with light, but if one is divided, one will be filled with darkness, saying 61. Becoming a single whole, a spiritually whole person united with God, was the goal of the Thomas tradition of Syrian mysticism. When you make the two into one, then you will enter the kingdom, saying 22. The spirit, mind, and body of the mystic all become united in God. Its new way of being is singleness. The word for single one or singleness in the Syriac Aramaic language is ihidaya and is used to describe souls that enter into mystical oneness. The hermits of the Syrian tradition eventually were called the Hidaya. However, Hidaya isn't merely a title, office, or robe that one puts on, but is a matter of spiritual realization, an interior state of being, an individual experience, a mystical level of awareness that is reached by a contemplative soul. Saying 24 tells us, there is a light within a person of light, and it illuminates the entire cosmos. But although the texts themselves can now be directly seen for the first time in nearly 2,000 years, to really see them is a task that invites us to something much more demanding and joyous than simply reading them according to familiar habits of intellectual analysis. It is not for nothing that in this document the very first words of Jesus, here called by the Aramaic name Yeshua, are these. Whoever lives the interpretation of these words will no longer taste death. Is there some kind of knowing that can transform our being to the point, dare we imagine, of bringing forth a life that does not die when the body dies? This Gospel of Thomas contains no biography of Jesus, nor any account of his miracles. It is a collection of 114 sayings called Logia in Greek, singular Logion. These are said to be the naked words attributed to the Master, the living Jesus, written down by Didymus Judas Thomas the Twin. What interests Thomas is the transmission of Yeshua's teaching Every saying received from the Master is treated as a seed with the potential of growing a new kind of fully conscious human being. While we may look to see the depth of wisdom contained in a verse and gain an understanding of various levels of meaning intended, we can also seek what the verse draws out from the depths of our own being, an expression of our holy soul or divine self. Jesus said, He who drinks from my mouth will become like me. I myself will become he, and the things that are hidden will be revealed. Saying 108. To drink from the mouth of the Master and to become like him is to draw out the various teachings to be found in the different layers of meaning in the scriptures. The master becoming the person who is drawing forth the wisdom of one's own holy soul and Christ self. Only in this way are the things that are hidden revealed. This process of seeking knowledge, understanding and wisdom must be more than merely the formation of mental concepts, but a new kind of lived experience. Thank you.